All right, folks, here we are. Welcome to the shop tonight. What we're doing is we're taking 19 layers. We're taking 19 layers of 1095 and 15 and 20, and we're doing a, a dry weld billet. And um, all I'm doing tonight is I'm going to set this weld so nothing gets in between because I have I have cleaned I've st uh, cleaned them with the grinder and soaked them in acetone to get any oils off. Then I stacked them and welded every single seam on this. Basically, it acts just like a canister because you don't need flux with a canister. Um, it, it's ba it's a sealed billet, and I'm gonna set these welds tonight on this and we're gonna see what happens you know um, I've never done one of these before it's been in there for about oh five six minutes and uh, we're getting a little bit of heat in it and I'm gonna be take it out here real quick and just tap on it to to close it down even more so that if there is any cracks in my welds because there probably is because I am not a welder by any means um, we're going to try and help protect this thing so um, we're going to be pulling it out here pretty soon remember this is no flux okay and there's our billet right there this is not the largest billet layer count that I've done initially but this is the largest in thickness because of the size of steel that I use um, like I said it's 19 layers of virgin 1095 and 15 and 20 so that initial pull out was just uh, um, to help just set everything down on top of each other because with grinding you you're not gonna get every single one perfect when you're cleaning up the surface on them because I don't have a surface grinder that can get precise grinds on it. Um, so I just wanted to get that warm and set it down. Even though everything's sealed in there, my welds are not the greatest. So this big old punk of steel is probably going to squish down. I'm hoping to ride around 18 inches. We'll forge it out. We'll cut and stack and clean all the edges, do the same thing, another dry weld around it. can imagine right now it's just basically a block of weld because of all the seams as we get done as we get this thing forged down and welded it's going to uh, take less and less because it's just going to be three full seams 360 degrees around with each of the cuts each time to make a dry weld and we're doing it all by hand the thing is I like doing it by hand because it's what I have available to me The main reason I'm attempting a dry weld this time around is because I sold my my small forge um, to a buddy of mine who needed one. It was my forge welding forge, and this forge has had copper and brass and stuff in it, and I don't want it to contaminate. And it will contaminate when you have when you're using flux because it will get in there. And so it's really. Um, not a good thing you're gonna be just wasting steel and wasting time here I'll break out the the Frankenhammer <laughs> and put her right over there Bad boy. So we'll play around with that guy. This is my my vice mounted drop hammer, gravity hammer. We'll we'll finish. We'll set these welds with this puppy.
pushed down quite a bit. So now this right here is our dry well Damascus, 19 layers. You can see it's every seam has been welded. And we're just going to continue working this and see what happens. Okay. But in between, let me put this in there. In between welding heats and forging heats, we're going to make a little draw knife. We're going to make a draw knife out of this piece of metal right here, this piece of cultivator steel. We're going to also stick this in there. And in between our welding heats, we will beat on that. That way, you guys get to see the hammer go like this constantly. No, it's good for you. Um, Damascus. Damascus is a an art form today. It is. I mean, that's what it is. It's a. It is a. It's inferior to a mono steel of today's um, standards. Um, you only do it because it looks pretty and garners a lot of money for your piece. Um, that's basically it. So, why do we do it? Well, because of that. But the history behind it is this. It's, we had a lot, a lot of shitty iron, iron, a lot of crappy iron back in the day. And we had a little bit of carbon steel they considered carbon steel. Most likely um, some form of meteorite that you could, uh, could get really hard. Um, they did do a little bit of blister steel which is a, a carbon um, type steel um, back then but they had very little of it. It was, it was just very little and Damascus Originally, the only reason we even know that it had the alternating layers of material in it was because of the corrosion that happened on the blades that we found and studied them and found out that they were different types of material, different types of, of ferrous materials. And they didn't go about etching them to make them look pretty or anything like that. That came about, that's a modern concept. And so, when you see, like, in if you see Hollywood have Damascus, Damascus weapons that have been etched and you can see it on there, that's a crock of shit. If the tip of my finger was the amount of carbon steel that was around, my entire shop was the amount of iron. Shitty, porous, brittle iron. Um, but they still needed to make good weapons, and so what they did is they folded and they folded and they folded took a little bit of that carbon steel and they folded and they folded with charcoal and they they built it up and they built it up and they built it up and then they had a relatively good when it comes to when you're thinking of in the relationship of it being good counter to the iron the straight iron weapons that were around and so Damascus today has become sought after in many circles because of its beauty. It is never sought after because of its strength. It is not a strong product at all. And if anybody tells you that otherwise, then they're lying to you because the only reason we even do it, well, it's fun, it is, is because we can get more money it is a inferior product next to a mono steel blade, period, because of the built-in weaknesses of that blade, of the Damascus. There is numerous forge welds in there that, if done incorrectly, you may not even see one. It may be in the very center of your billet, but the, it is a weakness in there, and it will continue to be a weakness in there. It may never even show up on the surface, period. We'll never know about it, but it's there. Um, so just think about that when you're buying a a uh, 
a knife, a tool, what, whatever it is, think about why you're buying it. Right, today we are doing what's called, what's basically a faggot weld. It's when you stack up strips of steel and forge them together to make a, a, a billet or a bar. And so it's bundling together uh, steel to then make a bigger, thicker product. But what we're, what we're really doing is adding a flux material, basically an antioxidant, because oxygen is the antithesis to any kind of weld. Um, this, this is why, that's why you use an inert gas in gas welders, because it displaces the oxygen within that area for a given amount of time so that your weld can seat. So the same thing what we're doing in forge welding is that we're putting flux, I use 20 mule team, um, borax laundry detergent that creates a molten layer that protects your welding surface from the outside air. And so essentially what a dry weld is doing, when you weld all your seams and you clench it down, you weld it really good, is what you're doing is you're creating basically the same environment that's in canister Damascus, where you don't use a flux in there as a, either. Um, you're using the can itself to keep the oxygen away from your welds. Kept in the vise, I welded it up, and then immediately I dunked it in oil and then immediately went to the forge to try and make sure that everything was touching. There's no air gaps in there because my welding is not the best. And so there may be places on there where it didn't quite um, set up. Um, there's books on Damascus, but there's really no educational literature on forge welding in general. There's little pieces and, and snips here and there within blacksmithing books about, you know, you know, how to do a scarf weld, but there, as far as I know, there's no actual book out there that is just on forge welding. And my opinion is, there's numerous videos, but my opinion on that is because it, the technique changes from Smith to Smith. Um, there's no, the only wrong way to do it is if the weld doesn't take. And so if you can get your welds to take, then your way is working, period. Um, we're gonna get, let me check on the pieces here. So our small bar is ready to go. So I'm gonna zoom in here for you guys so you guys can get a good look at the horn. Now we got a good look at the horn. So you got, I'm gonna keep it on this angle right here for you guys. And I'll continue to talk, but we're going to just straighten out this little piece here. That we're, it's gonna become our, um, our draw nut. Has a little bit of a bend in it. Now I am gonna take, and we're gonna come down on this right about there. What I'm doing is I'm upsetting a shoulder into here like that so that we can make our our little tank so for when we draw out our tangs on either side for our handles on this 19 layer billet what we're doing is continuing to refine our welds. The problem with this style of welding without a press is that, or a power hammer, is that it's going to take way more heat. And we're not going to know if we were successful until the very freaking end. I mean, period. We, are, we will, will not know. And that, to me, I think that's cool. But at the same time, it's uh, kind of scary at the same time because there's a 
bunch of steel in here that if it's no good, it's wasted. So there you go. We're gonna wait for this to heat up to weld heat here. We're not quite there yet. Putting two chunks of steel in there is, is not always a good thing. But we will just sit here until our piece that temperature and continue working on this draw knife. Put a little chamfer in this, take it back to center on this one side. Starting to get a, a twist in it. This draw knife will lengthen out a little bit, but it's not going to be a super big draw knife. But it will be a nice little draw knife. And all this is is just cultivator steel. So I'm going to pull out that big old piece now. All I'm trying to do is stay in the center of this billet here so that it doesn't mushroom over as much and pushes the center out. And I may need to re-weld my, my piece of metal on there really quick to make sure that it stays. If this works, I'm probably going to stop using flux unless I'm demoing and strictly only do uh, dry welds. Okay, we're gonna work on this other tang over here a little bit. So you have what's called dirty welding as well, and that's What's, what's done at the anvil with the heat. And so what you're doing is you're doing a three quarter inch, a three quarter cut and then folding it, giving a quick brush, throwing some, uh, um, a lot of people use anhydrous flux, uh, but borax down on there and then closing it up real quick. It's what's called a dirty well because you're not taking the time to actually uh, really clean your steel. I've had really good success with it, but it's still, um, literally playing with fire. Now I think I didn't get enough of a of a shoulder put down on mine. I may have to draw down a little bit more on it. Yeah, our little button's coming off there hold on to it but we're getting good compaction on it what I'm doing is I'm just prepping my station over there for when I get ready to weld up this end again so after this this heat we'll fire up the welder real quick go for it. Now this might come off during this process right here. back in there. Go to our other piece we're working on here. We just have to get enough on there to do our bend, our little bend here in the tanks be able to shove handles on it. But I want to keep it relatively thick um, around around the uh, blade area so that it, you know, it's not going to bend. So I may have to uh, take and draw down a little bit 
on our blade right now so that we add more steel to those uh, corners. But we'll see. But we'll just, we'll see. inches wide on this yesterday four inches wide to right around two and a half no flux no nothing another thing that's good about having a press less likely for your, your your tab you're holding on to to break off I freaking cut the shit out of my hand today it's giving me some issues so we may cut this one short here what's called there's a little lap in there you can see that right up there so what I need to do is I need to heat that up and take a, a different hammer to it and open that up so that I can upset it back into itself and how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna stick it down in the pritchel hole and I'm gonna come at it from the, that top side so I'm not gonna stick the lap side down I'm gonna stick the lap side up hammer right here this small cross and straight peen hammer I actually cut the shit out of both my hands yesterday and today but I'm trying to get that away from it it's pretty much got away from it we're going to come in to it on this side. And really work that down. There's a little bitty one there now, but it's not that big of a deal. We'll be able to fix it. Okay. This might be last heat on this big billet. Oh, there she went. Okay, well, that's all the marbles right there for tonight. So you can see We've reduced this quite a bit just in the heats we were doing. So we will get it good to go. I'm going to take it off the anvil. We're going to put it up here on the vise. We're going to turn this off. My thumb is killing me. I'll let that guy sit up there. It's not as bad for it so far this has turned out really good I'm really pleased um, you can see how big the billet was yesterday right now if that's not welded I should quit blacksmithing truly I should if that's not welded 
Um, it's not blowing, it's not making bubbles. It's not blowing out. Um, it's not trying to bow, so it's all stuck in place. But I'd be really surprised if that isn't entirely welded together. All right, folks. Well, I'm sorry, I got myself right there yesterday with my grinder. And then I got myself right there up underneath the fingernail, into the fingernail bed with my grinder. I caught the the uh, the side of it and it just stuck. Call, call my grinder the ocularis. I, I might call my grinder karma. Um, Cause uh, I woke up in a really shitty mood this morning. And so maybe karma came to bite me. <laughs> I think that's, that's what I'll do. I'll just name her, I'll name her karma. Um, it's uh, rather apropos. So we'll get this thing worked out. I mean, I just, my hands couldn't really, I had to, I couldn't grip anything on my hammer hand with the, with this thumb on my left hand and this finger kept getting bumped into shit. And then when that, that tab flew off, I was like, you know what, let's call it for the night. So, but we got a shit ton of work done just in a little bit of heats we did. I mean, this is, it, move, it moves really good and I'm really pleased with what's going on with it. So, uh, so y'all take it easy, stay safe out there, be well, and as always, for John.